Well, howdy folks and welcome to another Lifestyle Overland video. This one is very, very special. I am currently in a Lexus GX550 towing a beautiful Expedition trailer. How did I get here? Buckle up, I'm gonna show you. If you're new here, welcome to the Lifestyle Overland Story. I'm Kevin, this is my wife Sarah, 10 year old daughter Caroline, and the newest addition to the family, 15 month old Abigail. Now this channel is usually dedicated to sharing our family's overland travel and camping shenanigans ranging from the Gulf Coast to the Arctic Coast, with the core of our explorations being centered around the Southwest United States along some of the most beautiful trails in the world. For the past decade, our family has been exploring some of the most remote stretches of North American backcountry in our 2014 Toyota 4Runner, 2016 Lexus GX460, and sometimes in our classic 1980 Land Cruiser project. If you have watched our videos, then you know without a doubt that we've put all these vehicles to the test with nearly 300,000 combined miles of travel. And while that number is just a warm up for an on road Toyota vehicle, the majority of those miles have been under severe use in off road conditions along sometimes brutal trails. And all that while usually towing an overland trailer. Impressively, but not surprisingly, they have taken the abuse in stride and never failed to get us home. All this to say, we know our way around the Toyota and Lexus platforms, both functionally and mechanically after all these years of building, maintaining, and exploring in them. So it was really exciting to get a message from Lexus asking for our input on the new platform they've been developing to replace the dated but ever faithful GX460. Now to be honest, I'm not one to get excited about new vehicle platforms since we've always been more interested in models with a proven track record for our overland builds. But my curiosity about the future of the GX platform had me clearing my schedule to test drive the new 550 and see if the future of Lexus was in line with the needs of a heavy off-road user. Howdy folks and welcome to a very special video in this adventure. We're actually doing something a little bit different. We've been invited by Lexus to come and try out their GX550. Now I know there are tons and tons of videos already out there covering the GX550 platform, all the specs and all that kind of stuff. But in this video, I'm gonna share the experience, the GX experience. I'm gonna show you guys what it's like to go out there and play with one of their fancy new platforms and I'm super excited. For this event we've actually got old faithful Aspen here who we've been working on because she's actually going to be headed to Alaska to go up for rent with Alaska Overlander so lots of things going on. Can't wait to get out here and compare the old platform to the new platform and share with you guys just how it feels what we think about it. But right now we're at a regional airport and I'm waiting for a good friend of mine who's going to come and help run these cameras while I test drive the 550. Now the family isn't allowed to come on this one. It's an 18 and older event, understandably so, because there's a lot of other quote unquote influencers who are going to be filming their experiences and nobody wants some kids screaming in the background for that. So totally understand that. So solo this time, but I'm really excited to share our thoughts and experience. So right along. Today, I'm joined by my good friend Artie Nuttall, another GX460 owner who not only knows his way around a camera, but also owns and operates Artec Industries and Expedition Trailers. Hey man. What's up buddy? Hey there. Yeah. Good. Artie has a long-standing track record of building high quality products and has been an off-road enthusiast for years. So I'm really looking forward to his insight on the 550. And obviously, aviation is another one of his pursuits. 
so it was fun to get a peek at this beautiful 1979 Piper Cherokee 6 up close before we put the hammer down for Southern California to find camp within striking distance of our first stop in the GX experience. Fog in the background, so Let's cool. Go. All right, well, good morning, folks. A little quick campsite before we head on into LA proper. Thankfully, we didn't get dumped on last night, but it did start snowing pretty dang hard right before bed and cold, but we were more than toasty. Joined up with my good friend Corey, Overland Dad. He's gonna be going down to the rigs and coffee with us, so uh, let's get on down to the Lexus dealership. This morning, we were up early to make our way to Longo Lexus for a Riggs & Coffee kickoff where we would get our first glimpse of the Overtrail Plus models that would be the test subjects for our upcoming off-road course. As we eased our way back to paved roads through the fog, we made a mental note to return to this area and explore some of Southern California's higher elevations. As beautiful as this was, it was really hard to leave this magical place behind after such a short stay, so I'll have to come back with the whole family for more exploration. Folks, we just wrapped up our rigs and coffee at Longo Lexus. Thank you guys so much for coming out to see us. Had all kinds of awesome folks and patrons that came out to say hi and see Aspen and check out the new trailer. Now, the fun part of the story begins. We're headed to an off-road park to play with a few toys. After getting set up in our group camp, we took a few minutes to take in the surroundings including a couple of the luxury trimmed 550s that had already been delivered for comparison to the overtrails that would be showing up later. As they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And while my concerns about looks have taken a back seat in recent years to reliability and off-road capabilities, I personally feel like Lexus absolutely nailed this design. As the setting sun and gusty winds and temperatures dropping, we got busy whipping up a hearty meal. And since this was a special occasion, it seemed appropriate to go with some thick, juicy ribeyes, sauteed mushrooms, and crispy Brussels sprouts. Over the past 10 years, our camping kit has slowly transitioned from a Coleman dome tent and a large collection of gear bins strapped to a roof rack to using one of these purpose-built overland trailers that allow us to keep all our gear ready to go at a moment's notice. The speed and convenience has allowed us to get out more often and stay in the wilderness much longer with the added capacity and creature comforts. Since this trailer has become an integral part of our travels, we've requested special permission from Lexus to hitch this Voyager behind the 550 to see if it not only can conquer the trails, but to do it with a fully loaded 3,500 pound adventure trailer behind it. Needless to say, our anticipation was steadily growing as the big day approached. How do you like your steak? 
Medium, rare. Good word. <laughs> I was gonna make you leave. You said, "Well done." <laughs> And of course, as soon as that happened, I immediately had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> All right, well, good morning. We are headed to the training grounds to put 550 to its paces alongside yours truly, Aspen here, and just do some comparison. So this whole event is all about just getting our first impressions, our vibe, our feel for the 550. Lexus is really interested in knowing what folks like us think about the platform. So um, I'm really excited to dig into it. I haven't done too much prep. Like I, I know some basic specifications and there's a lot of videos out there that's going to cover all of that information. What I'm going to cover is my thoughts, my feel of what the GX550 is and if it's going to be a platform like the 460 that's going to fit the needs of most of us overland adventure seekers. Finally, all of our travel and lead up to this moment was behind us as Lexus personnel arrived with the much anticipated overtrail trimmed 550s. These units are outfitted with many of the off-road bells and whistles our community has been asking for. My name's Kurt Williams and I'm with a company called OLT 4x4. Very, very excited uh, to have you guys experience yeah. it. No coming, so I appreciate it. <laughs> Two other premium pluses here. This is a great opportunity for us to learn from you guys. After some introductions and general guidelines, we were free to dig into these beautiful machines and familiarize ourselves with the interior space and off-road button layout before hitting the practice course. All right, folks, well, it's finally time now I've not opened the door. I've not sat in this thing yet. I've been wanting to share my genuine opinion and response and feel of the 550. Now there's four things, four critical things when it comes to first impressions with a vehicle. One is approach. How does it look? Well, me personally, I think this thing is sick. Second thing is the door handle. When you grab that thing, does it feel like it's built right? So let's see what it's like. Smooth, smooth, very, very little play. I like that. Number three is how does the seat feel? Does it make you uncomfortable? Does it make you feel welcomed? What does the backside say? Backsides, <laughs> so I'm gonna take a nap right here. This is nice. Just enough support on the bolsters on the sides. But then the fourth thing, the most important thing, the steering wheel. Does it feel sturdy? Does it feel like you're gonna be in control or does it feel like a toy? Honestly, my first impression is it's a little bit squishy, a little more squishy than I'm used to, but I think that's okay. I think it's something I could definitely get, get used to. And then the next thing is just the layout. So I'm just gonna take a minute here and see what I think about this. So one thing that stands out immediately is the start stop button is actually somewhere where you can see it. I'm not having to lean over and try and find it. I also like the fact that all your mode selects are really close to your driving hand. So if you're on the trail and you're looking to go into another mode, it's right there, it's accessible. Now, the gear shift, we don't have the keys to this yet. So we'll go into more detail with how it functions. 
but the gear shift is in a great position. Maybe a little bit smaller than I was expecting. Kind of sometimes like something a little bit bigger, but that'll work. At least it doesn't take up a lot of room here in the console. And then, you know, you got this massive screen and when we get some keys to it, we'll see how it lights up. We'll see what features and apps and stuff are available. Back to the steering wheel. We've got loads and loads of buttons. We've got, my goodness, what is it? Like 12 or 14 buttons here. Everything from menu selection, volume control, phone controls, lane assist, and cruise control, and then modes to cycle through your heads-up display. One of my big complaints about the GX 460s is the controls for the windows are around the pull handle for the door and they fix that. Everything is nice and flat. It's right here. It's easy to grab. You can roll your windows up or down. You can make adjustments to your side view mirrors, which is a nice, nice touch. Oh, looks like we have um, paddle shifters. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that. How many times when we're towing, we're in sport mode down here and we're trying to you know, grab the perfect gear for the hill climb or if we're in a technical situation, maybe we're on a downgrade, we're trying to downshift to get a little help to the brakes. I don't have to reach down there anymore. We've got paddle shifters up here, I like that. All right, let's see as far as the console goes. All right, so we press in here. Oh man, we've got a cool box. Now, that does mean that there's not a console. And being a camera guy, I like to keep a lot of my camera stuff in the console. So, I don't know. I think Sarah would appreciate this, but I'll have to find another spot for my camera gear. That's not a problem anyone else is gonna face though. So I think a lot of folks are gonna like that wireless phone charging so you got a nice spot real close here for your phone i've got a fairly large phone once we get it started up we'll see if it is going to be positioned correctly it looks like it's a little bit small to be honest with you but if it can still charge it doesn't hurt my feelings a bit uh we've got cup holders we've got 12 volt charge with a nice ooh, look at that little guy that's sexy uh usb dual usb c's we've got electronic parking brake and here's our high and low now i i like that it's nice and accessible here but what i'm afraid of is with this toggle sticking up above the top of the console here there might be some inadvertent slapping of this switch moving your drinks back and forth so we'll we'll think on that for a minute Center locker and rear locker, all right here, nice and accessible. So on trail, that's gonna be awesome. All right, so we can actually close our cup holder. So that's also another nice spot to keep your phone if you like. Everything has a really nice, firm feel. There's no pops or cracks. The dash itself is actually soft. So this is actually like a foam-based dash up here. So that probably eliminates a lot of your, your pops and snaps and stuff that you get from your harder plastic dashes. So you got a couple of vents here with their controls. Let's look in the glove box. Pretty standard stuff there. Not exactly gargantuan, but just the right size. Very flat dash. Lots of legroom. You don't get the impression that you're being encroached on. I like that a lot. I like the fact that it feels, it feels like an off-road vehicle. Everything on the dash is out of your face. So you've got lots of maneuverability. That's great for me with cameras and stuff that I'm moving around. Visibility. So looking out the windshield right now, that is one sexy hood. I, I like that a lot. It's a very long nose. It's longer than I was expecting from in here, but the nice part is you have a real indication of where the end of your vehicle is. So when you're trying to navigate obstacles, you can really see where the front of the vehicle is actually placed. So that's a big plus. And what we got up here, oh, this is a heads up display. So there should be some information that we can project onto the windscreen here. And speaking of windscreen, not huge, but I still, I still feel like there's a ton of visibility and it's probably because it's more vertical. Now, side view mirrors, I wasn't expecting this, but they're actually vertical placement and they're, Fairly large, fairly large enclosures. Looking forward to playing with that on the trail just to kind of get a feel for the visibility. Back to the seats. So I've been sitting here for what, three minutes now? And it's plush. It's, it's not too soft, it's not too hard. I think Goldilocks would appreciate this one very, very, very much. 
Something else that I just noticed, we actually have a built-in brake controller with adjustment buttons underneath and your traditional slide, which is crucial for off-road trailering. When you've got those steep descents and you need to override your trailer brakes, that right there is critical. It is a bit hidden, but it's a very natural grab. It's got a concave place so my fingers immediately go. So if I'm looking in my rear view mirror, trailer's getting a little unruly back there, I can give it some help really quick while looking in the mirror. It's a very, it's a very natural motion right there. So a little departure from our traditional lighting controls. Things are a little bit different, but still in the same spot. Very, very much a Lexus layout very intuitive we've got our fog light controls and things like that pretty clear instructions on all those all right let's fire this bad boy up zero shake like you don't even know the engine's running there was there was no torsion to the body at all that feels nice all right so the first thing that caught my attention is the gauge cluster so this is a departure from other vehicles in our 460 where you had limited information. You had a menu that you would scroll through to get different information. There's a lot more available at a glance here. Everything from your total fuel mile per gallon averages, your oil pressure, your coolant temperature. We've got outside temperature. We've got uh, sign assist, so speed limit sign assist. It's gonna give you a reminder of what the speed limit is that you're traveling in. And then we've got a really cool RPM gauge. That, that is a nice touch. Ooh, that gives me, that gives me goosebumps. We've got our time, we've got drive info, so average speed, total time of travel. We've got our voltage meter, and then we also have our fuel meter with the estimated distance remaining right here on the screen. There's nothing to scroll through. There's no distractions of trying to chase that. I'm sure there's other modes. You can customize your dashboard to put the information up that's most relevant to what you're doing. So if we scroll through, we've got a nice little animation to go from mode to mode. So we've got adaptive cruise mode. This one doesn't have a name, but it's a customized option. And then back to the primary setting. All right, so let's take a look at our infotainment center really quickly. Looks like we're getting ready to hit the trail. <laughs> First thing that caught my eye is this temperature adjustment. That's pretty slick. I don't know, it has a feel of like, I don't, like an Apple watch or some type of Samsung watch, but it's got a nice little glow back behind it there. And with the dual climate control here, might have to take a little bit of time to play with all the different settings. How intuitive is it at this point? So we got a volume knob, which is a big plus and then we can turn audio off immediately. I love that. You know where it is. There's not a menu item you're trying to find to turn the volume down. Good move on that right there. Let's go and look at nav. So it looks like we've got several different settings. I think that this is gonna be one of those things where you're gonna to have to sit in your driveway for a minute and just kind of go through these different pages, set up your subscriptions if you want them. Primarily, everyone's gonna probably connect their phone wirelessly to Android Auto or CarPlay, which is also part of this right here. So I'm not gonna to waste too much time going through these different settings, but it's a massive screen. I really, really like this a lot. All right, just as important, Let's see what the passenger seat feels like. So we've got full control power seat over here, not a stripped down version, which I like a lot. Plenty of leg room. So let's go all the way back. I'm six foot three, I have long legs, and I don't feel crowded at all. And then with myself all the way back, leg room back here, we'll, we'll get a shot of that here in just a second. Feels a little bit tight, but we'll, we'll check. Very, very nice. Um, I do like having this pocket right up here so I can put camera batteries, put my phone, anything like that. All right, looking at these seats, we've got some subtle two-tone work going on here. So we've got some green accents in here with the, uh, the leather. Now, I try and steer away from lighter colors just because I've got two kids, but I think that this would still work. I think that this color combo is really slick. 
Okay, so we have an adjustment here because sometimes it's not enough just to go up and down. Sometimes you want that to come a little bit further forward. And we've got a really high headrest or we can suck it down all the way. Very, very cool. Now with this seat all the way back, let's see what the leg room is like. All right, again, six foot three. Yeah, that ain't happening. So a little bit, a little bit tighter. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to sacrifice a little bit of leg room up front. If you're going to have a adult back here. Now there's a possibility this might slide, but I'm not feeling any, any le levers. Very steep recline here. So we'll play with some more adjustments here in a minute, but it sounds like we're going to get started. So let's reluctantly pull ourselves away from this luxurious interior. Go drive them. <laughs> Let's do it. The beautiful part about this event is we have the opportunity to test the GX550 against our own rigs along the same tracks, which really helps highlight the differences in feel in near real time. Now to be honest, it would take some really difficult trails to really push these terrain selections to their limit, but we still got a decent taste of what their capabilities were like. How's she feeling on that first hill climb? I mean, it's effortless, just effortless. I did feel the, one of the rear shocks bottomed out, you know, we had a little dip there, but I was moving a little faster than most have, so that's to be expected. But just so smooth. One thing that really stands out to me right now is how easy the steering is. I believe this is the electronic steering. You know, there's mixed reviews on how much people like that. But uh, if you're looking for an effortless steering experience, this is it. The one thing that you do lose is some feedback from the terrain. It's a very isolated feeling. So for those old school drivers, that might be uh, a bit of a muted point, but it's nice because you can get a lot of driver fatigue just you know, fighting that feedback all day long on the trail when you do those 10, 12, 14 hour long trips trying to find camp in the middle of the night. Let's try driving mode. What we got here? Look at these animations. Look how sexy that is. So this is regular. This is sand. This is mud. And this is rocks. Okay, so this is actually auto. So it's gonna just do its thing. Let's try auto. I mean, for not airing down, this isn't half bad. That's cool. I like this. Now that, and look at the tire tracks. That's telling you where you're gonna go. That's cool. You've even got this side view. So if you had a nasty ledge that you're trying to watch for, let's just imagine that crevice right there. A little, look at that. We're running on the edge of this crack right here. You wouldn't be able to do that by yourself. Man, that's handy. I know traditional four wheel drivers, like the tech and stuff is just a bunch of malarkey that gets in the way, but 
for those of you who like advancements in technology and making off-road driving a lot easier on yourself, they're pretty dang handy. Once we got a basic feel on this short series of climbs and off-camber situations, we headed off for the trails to find some bigger challenges. All right, folks. Well, this is the part of the show where I thank my sidekick, Artie Nuttall, for all the film work. And his reward is that he gets to drive the 550 on this next segment. So let's see what he thinks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> so show me your secret trick. All right, so seat controls yeah massage what yeah tap a seat let's get you going kevin oh my head turn it on baby oh <laughs> hello that might be that might be a little distracting <laughs> <laughs> oh right right in the glute oh. all right now it's working its way up oh man okay boy for long Drives? drives holy cow <laughs> this that would be the ticket oh my gosh that feels good yeah i mean it, it, it's not intrusive honestly i'm being silly it's <laughs> it's actually just right first impressions yeah. how's it feel it's awesome yeah i mean it feels nice and tight yeah like i love all the information yeah in the gauge cluster right like i, I don't know but that is just so cool to me. It's it's just, such a great touch. You know? Yeah. It's like yeah. a lava lamp. Kind of like. Totally. One thing I love about this, as opposed to the 460, is that you have all your climate controls right here. You don't oh. have to navigate to them. I don't want to get in trouble. Mm. Do it. Do That's it. what we're here for. Get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, that feels good. That takes yeah. off. That takes all. some power. Yeah, and there's not really any lag. Yeah. Uh-oh, you yeah. made it mad. <laughs> okay, you ready for the you're accelerator? Push, you're pushing buttons. Woo! <laughs> Holy snikes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. I hear you. It's like, oh my gosh. It's like ghosts. That is so cool. Object down to the now we're headed back. Wow. Ooh, full screen. Oh, oh my gosh. This is cool. You gonna roll this? You ready for this? <laughs> yeah, holy cow. Oh, there it is. There it is. So, a little bit of... All right, so we yeah. were off there. Oh my gosh. So Man, and it's it, you really still quiet. Hear you still it hear a little it, bit, but it's but not. not as much as yeah. the 460. Yeah. How'd it feel in here? 
That was so smooth. Was it? Like, I was not jerking around at all. That was, that was awesome. That's so cool. I need that. That helps a little bit, huh? Just a little more. <laughs> so it needs that and the wing. <laughs> you know, size does matter. <laughs> sides i mean this is effortless there's nothing to this this is pulling better than aspen aspen was you know had a little surge, little spin in right here oh i see the yeah, display now Have you, can you see it when you were sitting here? oh no you know i yeah. didn't even look for it that's so cool <laughs> that's awesome oh dang crawl control here. Not touching the gas. So now I'm looking over the hill, looking over the hill. It's all clear. It's all clear. Where do I want to go? I want to go here. Now it's completely still crawl control. This crawl control, this crawl control I would use. This is smooth. There's not a single sound coming from the brakes. That's the whole reason why I never use it on Aspen or Silver, is because it's completely silent. I would use this. It's this. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Lexus. Good job. I love my 460. I love it a little less now. <laughs> Did you notice what I was talking about with the steering? How it's it's constant, like it's the same pressure. No matter where no you matter go. No matter what yeah. you're in, no matter what you're, if you're in the mud, if, if you're in a rut, that electric steering, while it does take away some feedback as to what you're in, and like right now, I'm, I'm in a little crevice here. And it's the same. I mean, look at this. Just finger steering. I think I like it. I think I can get used to it. I mean, I like being connected to the trail, but I don't know. For as many hours as we're on the trail, that would really reduce fatigue. And see, seriously, riding smoother in its stock form, not aired down, then Aspen. What a stage four icon suspension. I mean, you could get this thing and go. Color me impressed. All right, so the show isn't over yet. The big question, how does it tow? We've got special permission from these fine folks to hook up our trailer and see how she tows. So it was auto braking. It wouldn't let me back up any further. So this, oh, really? this must be an override for, for hitching up. Yeah. But, but it wasn't gonna let me, some more. it wasn't gonna let me run into it, which is nice. And now folks, the moment we've all been waiting for. Holy cow, look at this view. Look at that. Oh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> and it's like this trailer is not even back there. It didn't squat, it didn't sag. Well, we were worried that because it didn't have like upgraded springs that we'd get at least a little sag. 
Done. Done. Kevin's thinking. I'm doing math. <laughs> I'm doing math. <laughs> How many rigs can one have? I want them all, but I especially want this one. Oh. Well, well, well. I, I'm surprised. Like, I came into this open-ended, no expectations. I didn't do too much research. Just, just enough to have a basic grasp because I wanted to be surprised. I wanted to just give you guys the raw emotions of what it felt like to get in it. And it, you know, I'm being really critical. I generally am. Like, I already can attest. I, I have a list this long of like ideas and improvements <laughs> to an already incredible trailer. And so, that's what I do. Like I, I pick things apart. I praise the things that are good, but you know that's that's my goal is to always be improving and finding ways that you know you can tweak it just a little bit more. But let me tell you, there's only about three things that I found that are just small. The rest <laughs> blows it out of the water. This is just phenomenal. just effortless just no problem some of this just take you know some time to get into some other situations and not you know not be in a rush to get back to camp and all that but just what we can quickly scramble and play with is just phenomenal I mean I'm not in any special mode here I've got rear and center locker on and listen not a slip there was a little slip but just for a split second. And I'm gonna look over the hill, because I can't see, and then look at that. It's all built in. See exactly where we're going before we're even there. Well done. Now there was one thing that I, we noticed, and, and it could just be operator error, because you know we're still new in this, but for some reason you can't use the brake controller in four low unless there's a setting that we're missing so we're going to ask some questions and learn a bit more about it but i mean this thing it, it the trailer doesn't even need brakes this thing has just got it honestly if you were to blindfold me and tell me to drive this without allowing me to look behind i would not know the trailer was there it's just doing its thing We just keep finding cool stuff and, and this heads up we've actually got showing locked rear and locked center diff. Anything you need to know about this vehicle while you're off-road is available 
on this beautiful screen. And another thing that I didn't mention, and it didn't dawn on me till now, but sometimes with these big screens, you get a lot of glare, and you can't really see what's happening, especially get some dust blowing in. I've been impressed. This thing is really bright, very visible in all sorts of daylight. We've done it from noon until now it's, what, 5 or 6 o'clock, sun setting. And uh, even with a direct blast on it, I can still clearly see what we're doing here. Well, I'm getting a little bit parched. You know, it's been a blustery, windy day, kind of dusty. Yeah. What have we got? Well, let me see. <laughs> well, we got a cool box right here. Look at that cool box. <laughs> Holy crap, they're uh, actually cold. They're actually cold. <laughs> they're actually no, let's crack cold. one of those puppies open. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh. oh man, <laughs> GX550 water, Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable, only the best. <laughs> Nectar of the gods. <laughs> you want one? Yeah, that's why we have the Absolutely. focus on this GX550 now. Yeah. yeah, you guys nailed it on the off-road part. That's it's right. it's a very impressive. Yeah. After our day of playing on the trail and giggling like little schoolgirls over every new feature we discovered, we headed back to camp for a delicious dinner before circling up around the fire to share our thoughts on the platform and how it compared to our own setups. Then again the next morning, we circled up and shared even more thoughts on our experience after having slept on it and letting the experience sink in a bit more. Here's what I had to share. So for, for us, uh, like for many of you, when you add a vehicle to your adventures, you end up adding a family member. And that's yeah. one thing that I really went to bed with. You know, we name our rigs. And, uh, I mean, even when I suggested selling our 460, my daughter boohoo cried. <laughs> <laughs> she had all those memories tied into that. So yeah. there's an emotional tie to, to, to the Lexus uh, legacy. And I just have to say, you know, as I thought about this going to bed last night, um, how cool it is to know that the next generation is also fitting of being a family member and being excited about what's to come. I mean, right. this is just your, your first step right. into the next generation and yeah. oh my goodness, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So please, you know, deliver our thanks to the engineers and all those who oh, came yeah. up with all these concepts and, and thank you for listening to us because, yeah. you know, Artie here, he puts up with me and my ideas on this trailer. <laughs> and a lot of times it's coming from a hardcore user yeah. Yeah. that's going to cost him 20% more to make it 2% better. Yeah. So for you guys to do that at your level, yeah. to listen to yeah. what you said, you know, it was a niche group, you yeah. know, yeah. In, in the grand scheme yeah. of things, yeah. is phenomenal. So thank you for, for listening. Thank yeah. you for. That means for a lot to us. While I quickly fell in love with what Lexus has done with the GX550, I'm going to need some time to really process the experience while I dig deeper into the features and specifications to further develop my official opinion. But this event was perfect for some raw first impressions and natural feature discovery. If you would like to see a more in-depth comparison of this versus the 460, then let me know in the comments below. Obviously, we will all be waiting to see how these smaller displacement engines with their twin turbos will perform in the long term since this seems to be the future for all Toyota and Lexus platforms. But I have to say that my limited first experience gave me a bit more peace about its performance. And if anyone can do turbos right the first time, it would definitely be Toyota and Lexus. Overall, my first impressions of the Lexus 550 left me a bit stunned. I was expecting some minor improvements along with a fresh look for the GX Legacy. What I instead found was a huge leap forward from the GX 460. Now it's no secret that at the end of the day, the price point will make it difficult for many to plunk down around $80,000 US for a brand new, fully outfitted overtrail, especially for just beating around in the bush. But there will be many GX 470 and GX 460 owners waiting with bated breath for the 550 to hit the used market where they're going to snag up the next generation Lexus for their adventure travels. However, after my testing session, I've come to recognize that where a 470 or 460 would require a lot of aftermarket parts to be fully trailworthy, Lexus has probably upset the aftermarket industry by creating a very trail-ready rig that can literally go from showroom to the trailhead on the same day. 
It's clear that with just a few clearance enhancements, this platform will quickly be attacking even the more technical obstacles with ease. If you'd like to see us put this 550 through the Lifestyle Overland testing program, then feel free to let us know in the comments below. Our family would love to continue our research and testing along some of North America's most infamous trails. Oh, that's much better. Yeah. Wow. Because that's, cool. that's the problem is that dra that leg fatigue. That's nice. Oh, it's even more comfortable now. So you just press this, right? Uh -huh. See, clear. Right. And then it frosts. What? It. What? <laughs> you can watch the eclipse from in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the heck? So cool, right? Oh my gosh. In a corporate world where everything is being maximized, the, the, the lemon is being squeezed to the nth degree, and corners are just getting cut to maximize profits. These guys come out here and just keep putting amazing things to work. You know, there's an element of technology that you don't necessarily want because of the fear of it going out on you, right? Breaking, right, mm -hmm. right? going down, yeah. and then you're stuck because you can't work on this thing. It's mm. so advanced. Right. But being that it is Toyota Lexus, mm -hmm. that brand, that longevity, right, right, that right. that's inherent, mm. you know, with mm. these products, it's like, Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. There's a level okay. of trust there. Yeah. You exactly. know, that's been proven over decades. <sighs> Good stuff. This was yeah. an expensive trip. This was an expensive trip. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, case in point right now. Okay. So, so Artie and I have a 12 hour drive ahead of us. We're free to go. We're done. Like we're done. Yeah. We've, we've done everything there is to do, but we just want to sit here and <laughs> play with all the bits and pieces and Maybe we should get one more massage before we go. I think that's one for the I rope. think that's a good idea. Right. Thanks for the help, man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, this was fun. This is fun. <laughs> there it is. And it feels good too. <sighs> oh yeah. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> If there was one way to sum up this trip, Artie just said it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Before I go, I have to give a huge thank you to Lexus USA, Longo Lexus, and especially to Kurt, Jackson, and team with OLT 4x4 who did a fantastic job of coordinating this experience. Thank you for riding along, and until next time, Stay curious and remember to leave it better than you found it.